Sierra Leone is a country with a rich history and culture, but it has also faced its fair share of challenges. In recent years, however, the country has been making great strides in development. One of the most visible signs of this progress is the number of construction projects that are currently underway. In this video, we'll take a look at 15 of the most exciting undergoing construction projects in Sierra Leone. We'll discuss the purpose of each project, the challenges that have been faced, and the potential benefits that each project could bring to the country. So if you're interested in learning more about the future of Sierra Leone, then be sure to watch this video. You won't want to miss it. 15. The Emergency Medical Services Project the Emergency Medical Services EMS, project in Sierra Leone is a major initiative to improve access to emergency medical care in the country. The project is funded by the World Bank and is being implemented by Doctors with Africa and the Veneto region. The project started in 2018 and is expected to be completed in 2024. The project has four main components. 1. The establishment of a national EMS system. 2. The training of EMS personnel. 3. The provision of ambulances and other equipment. 4. The development of a public awareness campaign. The national EMS system will be coordinated by a central operation center, OC. The OC will receive emergency calls and dispatch ambulances to the scene. The ambulances will be staffed by trained EMS personnel who will provide basic and advanced life support. The project will train a total of 500 EMS personnel. The training will cover topics such as basic and advanced life support, trauma care, and patient transportation. The project will provide 81 ambulances to Sierra Leone. The ambulances will be equipped with basic and advanced life support equipment. The project will also develop a public awareness campaign to educate people about the importance of emergency medical care. The campaign will use radio, television, and print media to reach a wide audience. The EMS project in Sierra Leone is a major step forward in improving access to emergency medical care in the country. The project will save lives and improve the quality of life for many people in Sierra Leone. 14. Sierra Leone National Stadium Renovation Project the government of Sierra Leone has officially launched the $40 million rehabilitation of its Freetown Bay Stadium in March 2022, which is expected to be completed by 2024. A Chinese construction company have been charged with the responsibility to rebrand the West African nation's largest football stadium, situated at the heart of the capital. Completed on April 18, 1979, it has been in existence for over 40 years, is the only venue in the country to host international matches across all national teams. We know it's in our disadvantage to playing our home matches away from home, FA boss Thomas Daddy Bremer told BBC Sport Africa. But it's pleasing that the stadium is now being renovated. It's better to do it now than later. February 2021, it was banned by the Confederation of African Football almost three months after the Lyon Stars goalless draw against Nigeria in November pound 020 during the 2021 African Cup of Nations qualifier. That was the last international match that exposed the reckless and fragile state of the Sioka Stevens Stadium. Freetown City Centre Beautification Project the Freetown City Centre Beautification Project is a government-led initiative to improve the appearance of the city centre of Freetown, Sierra Leone. The project aims to make the city centre more attractive to tourists and investors, and to improve the quality of life for residents. The project includes a number of components, including the construction of new parks and gardens, the rehabilitation of existing infrastructure, such as roads and bridges, the planting of trees and flowers, the installation of public art, the improvement of public transportation, the project is being funded by a combination of government resources and donor funding. The project is expected to be completed in 2025. The Freetown City Centre Beautification Project is a major undertaking, but it has the potential to transform the city centre of Freetown. The project could make the city centre more attractive to tourists and investors, and it could also improve the quality of life for residents. 12. Emergency Solar Power Intervention Project 
Development Objective of the Regional Emergency Solar Power Intervention Project for Western and Central Africa, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Chad, Togo is to rapidly increase grid-connected renewable energy capacity and strengthen regional integration in the participating countries. The project comprises of four components. The first component, construction of solar photovoltaic, battery energy storage system and grid connections will finance all costs associated with the design, supply, and installation and operation and maintenance for the one to four years of the solar PV power plants and any associated works for grid connection. It consists of following subcomponents, i. Construction of 20 MWP-16 MW alternating current solar PV power plant on Mount Coffee Island in Liberia, 2. Solar PV and battery storage at two locations in Sierra Leone, and 3. Solar PV and battery storage in Chad. The second component, expansion of MT Coffee Hydro Power Plant and Dam Safety Enhancement consists of following subcomponents, i. Expansion of MT Coffee Hydro Power Plant with the installation two new turbines, and 2. Dam Safety Enhancement for Mount Coffee Hydro Power Plant. The third component, Distribution expansion and transmission optimization will finance the expansion of distribution networks and optimization of transmission in Sierra Leone and Togo to help the newly installed capacity to be connected to regional interconnectors and or reach national populations. It consists of following subcomponents, i. Supply and installation of voltage regulation equipment at 161-11 kV substation of Freetown to increase the evacuation capacity of the 161 kV transmission line and supply and installation of 33 kV and 11 kV distribution lines to optimize the integration of the Newton Solar Park in Sierra Leone and 2. Support extension and densification of distribution grid in Togo with climate-resilient grid infrastructure. The fourth component, regional coordination, institutional strengthening, and implementation support consists of following subcomponents, i. Regional integration and technical assistance, RITA, to West African Power Pool, WAPP, 2. Regional coordination and institutional strengthening, 3. Implementation support to National Project Implementation Unit, PIUs, and 4. Technical assistance for establishment of River Basin Management Agency and preparation of new hydro projects in Liberia. Eleven Special Economic Zone in Sierra Leone Africa Finance Corporation, a Pan-African multilateral development financial institution, and the government of Sierra Leone have broken ground on a special economic zone in West African country. Koya Industrial Zone which will be developed by AFC Investee Company, Arise Integrated Industrial Platforms, will focus on maximizing value capture and import substitution across core sectors, AFC said in a press statement. After parliamentary ratification of its agreement with the Sierra Leone government, Arise IIP has been granted a concession to develop a port and rail system in the Koya Industrial Zone and will build the energy systems and infrastructure to enable industrial activity. The project is expected to cost $120. The industrial zone aims to boost economic growth and generate new jobs in the country. The initial focus will be on import substitution by manufacturing tiles, processing iron ore used in the construction industry and developing pharmaceutical products. The initiative will promote value capture in agriculture by producing finished and packaged goods from forestry, cotton, soya and cashew. Launched in 2010, Arise IIP, co-owned by AFC and the Africa Transformation and Industrialization Fund, has built several special economic zones in nine countries, including Chad, Côte d'Ivoire, Congo, Nigeria, and Rwanda. AFC has invested $11.5 billion in 36 countries across Africa since its inception. 10. People Port and the People Tonkalili Railway the government of Sierra Leone has on Tuesday, January 17, 2023, signed the People Port and People, Tonkalili Railway Development, Expansion and Management Lease Agreement with Arise Integrated Industrial Platforms Limited. According to the Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources, Timothy Kebber, this agreement is part of the bigger reforms in the mining sector, where the government intends to open the space for more players to participate. He furthered that Arise IIP is a credible company with a reputation for developing and managing infrastructure in Africa. 
This agreement is taking a government asset from monopoly to be more accessible, he added. This lease agreement will give a 10% free carry to the government of Sierra Leone and provide access to rail and port facilities to other bulk mineral producers in the Northern Corridor. This project will expand economic activities by providing jobs for Sierra Leoneans and enable passengers locomotion from Tonkalili through Bomoli to the Port Loco district. Through this agreement, the company will also introduce passenger rail services allowing communities for better mobility and trade, increase mineral export with an additional 20 million mount, 10% dividend to government, surface rent to landowners, annual royalties PAYE and other taxes. Zero 09. Construction of Amilcar Cabral Submarine Cable System the Amilcar Cabral Submarine Cable Development Project began in October 2018 when Guinea and Cape Verde signed a memorandum of understanding to link with an optical fiber submarine cable called Cable Amilcar Cabral. The original plan was to work on the project with Sierra Leone, Mauritania, and other nearby countries on the coast of West Africa. This submarine cable system will be an optical fiber submarine cable connecting these countries in the field of information and communications technology. In December 2022, the first meeting of the steering group for the Amilcar Cabral project to build a submarine cable for telecommunications was held. Economic Community of West African States being the organizer of the project's implementation, with a task of negotiating with beneficiary countries, donors and other interested parties. The project derives from the execution of Articles 32 and 33 of the ECOWAS Revised Treaty, supporting the region's commitment to reaching its desired goals. Being part of access of the ECOWAS ICT plan, a ministerial steering committee and the committee of experts are set to ensure the project execution. The cable will not only provide a backlink for Sierra Leone's existing unique submarine cables, but helping increase broadband penetration in member countries and promoting regional integration through digital communications and e-commerce facilities, making it easier to create a single digital market in the ECOWAS region. 08. Sierra Leone's shift to electric mobility. The project is piloted by the government of Sierra Leone through the Environment Protection Agency, the Ministry of Energy and the Ministry of Transport with the support of Global Environment Facility and the United Nations Environment Program. The project aims at mitigating greenhouse gas emissions in Sierra Leone by accelerating the introduction of electric mobility through the development of legal, regulatory and institutional frameworks, capacity building, demonstration of pilot electric vehicles, development of business models for private sector engagement and finance schemes for upscaling and replication. According to the Minister of the Environment addressing the negative impacts of air pollution, climate change, and reducing fossil fuel dependency of the transport sector in Sierra Leone is the thrust of the e-mobility project. It is no hidden secret that these issues are troubling and endangering our efforts as a country to protect our environment for a healthy citizenry and biodiversity, he said. According to Professor Jaward, a global transition to low and zero emission mobility is essential to meeting international climate commitments, including the Paris Climate Agreement adding that the transport sector is a leading contributor to short-lived climate pollution, especially black carbon which can warm the earth faster compared to carbon dioxide. Sierra Leone aims to maintain its emissions levels below 7.58 mtCO2e by 2035 and to be carbon neutral by 2050 according to a recent report of its national determined contributions. The specific ANAP support to Sierra Leone through the EPA includes to help with the overall implementation of the project, supports the development of the National Strategy for Electronic Mobility, help with the identification of electric vehicles and suitable charging equipment, supports the EPASL with the call for proposals to identify the private sector partner for the demonstration project, contributes to the development of electric mobility policies and reviews and support studies on renewable energy integration and reuse and recycling of batteries. 07. The project for the extension of power distribution network along the Freetown Peninsula. The Ambassador of Japan to Sierra Leone, His Excellency Mokizula Hisanabu, and the Acting Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mamadi Gobe Kamara signed on the 19 sub th slash sub of December 2022 an exchange of notes to formally announce the provision of grant assistance for the extension of power distribution network along the Freetown Peninsula. 
the signing ceremony took place at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The project, valued at around $15 million, is divided into four main components, which are the construction of a 33 kV transmission line, the construction of an 11 kV distribution line, the construction of a 33-11 kV substation, and the construction of 11-0.415 substation. The project will also supply low distribution materials maintenance tools and spare parts. The project objective is to expand and stabilize the power supply in the southern part of the Freetown Peninsula and also strengthen the basic infrastructure of the Republic of Sierra Leone. It will also build on the northern and northwest power grids funded by Japan's government in 2008 and between 2012 to 2017 respectively. 06. The Freetown Waterloo Road The Freetown Waterloo Coastal Road is a new road that has been built along the coast of Freetown. The road is being funded by the European Union and is expected to cost $100 million. The road is scheduled to be completed in 2023 and will improve access to the city's port and airport. The Freetown Waterloo Coastal Road will give Sierra Leone's economy a significant boost it will facilitate the business transportation of goods and draw outside investment. Additionally, the road will make it simpler for Sierra Leoneans to get to and from the airport and part of the city. Over 5,000 jobs are anticipated to be created during construction and another 1,000 after the road opens. Additionally, it will contribute to bettering Freetown's clogged traffic flow. 05. Bokenema Road Rehabilitation Project The Bokenema Road Rehabilitation Project is a major infrastructure development project in Sierra Leone. The road connects the two largest cities in the southern part of the country, Bo and Kenema, and is an important link for trade and commerce. The project will also improve access to health and education facilities in the region. The road is currently in poor condition and is often impassable during the rainy season. This has a negative impact on the economy as it makes it difficult to transport goods and people. The project will rehabilitate the road, making it wider, smoother, and more durable. This will improve the flow of traffic and reduce travel times. The project will also improve access to health and education facilities in the region. The road will connect more communities to hospitals, clinics, and schools. This will make it easier for people to access these essential services. The Bokenema Road Rehabilitation Project is a significant investment in the future of Sierra Leone. The project will improve the economy, reduce poverty, and improve the quality of life for people in the region. 4. Sierra Leone International Airport Sierra Leone International Airport, commonly known as Lungi International Airport, is the country's major international airport. The airport is located at Lungi, a town on the northern bank of the Sierra Leone River estuary, and serves as the principal entry point for international visitors to the country. It is located across the river from Freetown and can be reached through a short ferry journey or a more recent bridge connection. The airport serves as a vital hub for internal and international flights, connecting Sierra Leone to destinations throughout Africa, Europe, and beyond. With only one terminal, the airport provides conventional services such as shops, restaurants, and lounges to meet the needs of passengers. Sierra Leone International Airport has undertaken major construction and renovation efforts in recent years to improve its facilities and services. These enhancements are intended to support the growing number of travelers while also improving the overall airport experience. The airport is critical to Sierra Leone's economic growth and tourism, serving as a major link for international trade and travel. Sierra Leone International Airport is positioned to be a critical gateway to this culturally rich and naturally diverse nation as the country develops and expands its global ties. 03. MCC Power Project The Millennium Challenge Corporation and the government of Sierra Leone partnered to implement a $44.4 million threshold program. One focus of the program was to deliver water and electricity services more effectively, with a focus on the greater Freetown area. Another focus area was to support policy reforms increasing transparency and accountability in the delivery of these services to limit opportunities for corruption. 
The electricity sector reform project was comprised of two activities that sought to make fully operational a restructuring of the electricity sector that began when the government divided the National Power Authority into the Electricity Generation and Transmission Company and the Electricity Distribution and Supply Authority, and enhanced the capabilities of key electricity sector institutions in system planning, transparency, and accountability. Having reliable access to electricity means students can study at night, hospitals can treat patients with better equipment, and businesses can grow and thrive. The Threshold program has helped lay the groundwork to increase access to electricity and to improve the operational and planning capacities of utilities in the electricity sector. The Water Sector Reform Project was comprised of three activities that supported government reform efforts to water sector institutions, tested improved business practices, reduced water loss, and piloted a public-private partnership model for public water kiosks. The program built in new water kiosks in two areas of Freetown that had not had reliable water access in more than a decade, using a model with the potential to be replicated to provide safe, accessible, and financially sustainable water to citizens and reduce time spent collecting water. Measures were also put in place to promote community safety when residents use the kiosks, including formal hours of operation, secure lighting, and community-led codes of conduct for behavior. Zero 02 Rehabilitation of Old Fura Bay College Fura Bay College is a public university in the neighborhood of Mount Oriol in Freetown, Sierra Leone. Founded on February 18, 1827, it is the first Western-style university built in Sub-Saharan Africa and, furthermore, the first university-level institution in Africa. It is a constituent college of the University of Sierra. The rehabilitation of this old academic center is ongoing and the total budget for the refurbishment of the historic building cost $1.5 million, the Minister of Tourism and Cultural Affairs, Miminotu Pratt said during a press briefing at the Ministry of Information and Communication. The minister said the first phase of the project is now ongoing and a total of $200,000 has been delivered to consultants to start consultations with the public to get the view of the public on how the rehabilitation is done. According to the minister, the restoration of the old college building is supported through the Ambassadors Fund and the Government of Sierra Leone. Government of Sierra Leone is providing support to keep the edifice intact and to ensure that it continues as a tourist site, she said. 01. The Lungi Bridge Project One of Sierra Leone's most challenging projects is the Lungi Bridges Project. The Lungi Bridge is a proposed major infrastructure project in the West African country of Sierra Leone. The 7 km long bridge will link the Lungi area to Freetown, passing over the estuary of the Sierra Leone River. Freetown International Airport is located at Lungi. The project was announced by President Julius Modabio in 2018. Its projected cost was initially $2 billion, making it the country's largest infrastructure project. However, the cost has since been revised down to $1.2 billion. The bridge is expected to take five years to build and is scheduled to be completed in 2025. The project is being funded by a combination of government resources and donor funding. The Lungi Bridge is a major step forward for Sierra Leone. The bridge will improve the economy, reduce poverty, and improve the quality of life for people in the region. So, those are just a few of the 15 most exciting mega construction projects in Sierra Leone. As you can see, the country is undergoing a major transformation, and these projects are just a part of that. It's still too early to say what the long-term impact of these projects will be, but they have the potential to significantly improve the lives of Sierra Leoneans. They could create jobs, boost the economy, and improve access to essential services. Of course, there are also some challenges that need to be addressed. These projects are expensive, and there is always the risk of delays or corruption. However, if these challenges can be overcome, then these projects have the potential to transform Sierra Leone into a more prosperous and developed country. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I encourage you to learn more about the future of Sierra Leone. The country is on the move, and these mega construction projects are just a sign of things to come. And so if you enjoyed today's content, hit the like button and of course to keep enjoying our content, 
Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and why not extend the luxury to you.